Great. Thank you all so much for being here today. I see some familiar names, so thank you for joining us. My name is Jackie Goldring. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I serve as the manager for undergraduate recruitment programs here in the College of Engineering. So we will just hang on here for a second or two until we get everybody logged on successfully. Um, we're also joined, this is Sammy here. So Sammy is our technical support today. She's one of our engineering student ambassadors. Um, and just know like this whole week is being recorded. So we are recording right now, if that's okay with everyone. And then we will put all of these sessions onto our YouTube channel next week. And I will drop a link to the YouTube in the chat. I'll also drop my email because if you have questions after all of the events this week, please do follow up either with me or with our ambassador team so we can help you all navigate this college search process. But we're stoked you're here this morning to learn more about civil and environmental engineering. And I also see Teresa and Kayla. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Great. Well, Shannon, you ready to take it away? Do you want to hold for another minute or so? Um, I was going to, but we can, I mean, we can go ahead. My name is um, Shannon Miller. I am the undergraduate advisor for civil and environmental engineering. Um, and as Jackie said, we have Teresa and Kayla here. They are our student ambassadors um, for civil and environmental engineering. They um, are available for support, really. Um, they kind of do anything and everything. Um, I know they're my right hand and left hand. They help me do everything that I do. Um, they are, uh, I'll actually let them introduce themselves, but they are integral to um, our department and um, they do tutoring, they do study sessions, they do mentoring, they do all of those things. Um, we also today um, are gonna have um, our department head, Dr. Charles Shackelford. Um, he will be here and he'll be able to answer some questions and maybe possibly give you a, um, hi, <laughs> uh, give you an overview of civil and environmental and kind of what our department is. Um, I do believe we will also have um, Dr. Siller, who is um, a civil environmental or a civil uh, faculty member, and then um, Dr. Ken Carlson, who is one of our environmental faculty. So um, I'll let Teresa and Kayla introduce themselves and kind of explain a little bit about what they do. Hi everyone, so my name is Kayla Schultz and I am a fifth year and final year studying civil engineering. I also have a minor in global environmental sustainability and I have been an ambassador for a long time now, <laughs> for almost over half of my college career. So I've been really involved with the department. I love civil engineering. I'll let Teresa introduce herself. Sweet. Um, my name is Teresa. I am in my fourth and final year of environmental engineering and I've been with the department for a little bit as well and I've also worked in the engineering success center. So um, I love environmental engineering. I think that this is a great department to be a part of. Kayla and I, um, like Shannon mentioned, we do a lot of group study sessions where we can facilitate a space for you to study with your peers. We do mentoring where we can give advice on scheduling your following semesters. If you have any questions about minors, study abroad, um, campus work, research. We, um, I try to be resources to help you get more information on that. So yeah, we both love working in this department. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Um, Dr. Shackelford, do you want to introduce yourself and maybe talk a little bit about our department? Yeah, thanks, Shannon. I, um, my name is uh, Chuck Shackelford, and I've been here for going on 33 years. I've uh, been department head for about seven years, uh, and I just want to welcome everybody to our department. Um, you know, we have an outstanding department. Um, right now, we're about 600 undergraduate students, of which about a third or uh, environmental engineering majors and two thirds are uh, civil engineering majors. Um, so we're, and I think we're the eighth largest uh, undergraduate department on campus. I think there's roughly 52 departments uh, on campus. Uh, a very strong and vibrant program. And, and I'll just say that if, uh, if you choose to come here, you get an outstanding uh, education. And I think the job market is going to be uh, exceptional uh, in the coming years given the emphasis on infrastructure, which is really what civil and environmental engineering are all about. So just welcome everybody and uh, hope you enjoy the day. Thank you. 
And I see also that Dr. Carlson um, is here. Um, I just wanted to let you know, Dr. Carlson, we mentioned in the session earlier, um, someone had asked the question about sort of when students break out from kind of separate from civil to environmental, um, or it's together and then it separates. And um, I had mentioned the fact that we break out section um, or Civ 102 and 103. So if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and maybe explaining that a little bit. Yeah, hi, thanks, Shannon. Um, yeah, I'm Ken Carlson. I've been here, I guess, 22 years. So I'm a environmental engineering professor. Been doing that for a long time. And like Shannon said, um, um, a few years back, uh, we've had envir environmental engineering undergraduate degree that's separate from civil for a while, 20 years or so. <clears throat> um, but recently, more recently, we have um, decided to take some of the classes and separate civil and environmental, and, and not because we want to just, you know, keep these students apart. Um, it's just that uh, there are some places that it's really, we think it's really um, beneficial to focus on environmental engineering type issues and let the civil section focus on civil engineering issues. And 102, 103 is one of those. So the first class you would take if you um, enroll in this department would be 102. It's an introductory engineering class. Um, I teach the environmental section and Tom Siller teaches the civil section. He's been doing civil engineering for a long time. So the, the objective of the class is really to um, acclimate you to engineering. We have a lab, you get introduced to different tools that we will use, software tools, largely computer tools. But it's also to um, sort of let you know what environmental engineering is all about. Maybe it's not really what you wanna do. Maybe you'd rather do civil engineering or mechanical engineering. And um, so I spend a lot of time discussing, you know, what environmental engineers do, what we, what we foresee for the future, um, answering a lot of questions about um, the, the coming years, the curriculum, et cetera. And then we follow that up in the spring with 103, which is um, a little more formal. Um, um, there's a little more con uh, program content in it. Um, we get more into some of the tools like AutoCAD or GIS, Geographic Information Systems. Um, but one of the things I would emphasize with 102 and 103 is that the, the labs are with both sections. Um, you're working with civil engineers, you're working, environmental engineers are working with civil engineers um, because that's likely what would happen in a career is they're similar, but um, they're different enough that, like I said a few decades ago, most, most civil engineering departments started to break them out. What is different about the environmental engineering track? More chemistry, more microbiology, um, um, some of the more science classes, um, ecology, et cetera. Um, and we don't do the structural stuff um, as much. There is some structural, but like steel design or concrete design, there's some classes like that, transportation that environmental engineering would not take. Um, so I'll, I'll be here if there's any questions. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we just kind of, it's an informational session. So really, if anyone has any questions, um, you know, we have, a lot of people here to answer <laughs> any specific questions that you may have. Well, I was thinking, um, and we also have Sammy here as well. Sammy, did you want to do a quick introduction? And oh, then I'm maybe sorry. we want to hear from um, some students about why did they pick their major here at CSU? And then also, why have you stayed at CSU? Uh, yeah, I'll introduce myself real quick. My name's Sammy. I'm an engineering student ambassador, so that's for the whole college. And uh, Kayla and Teresa are like specialized civil and environmental engineering, so they're definitely pros. But I'm in my fourth year studying civil engineering. I'm graduating in May. And uh, Jackie, do you want me to dive into those questions as well? Okay, sweet. Uh, so I chose civil engineering because I knew that I wanted to do engineering for the longest time, but then it came down to choosing which one. And I almost immediately eliminated the types of engineering where I can't see what I'm working on. So that would include like electrical and chemical engineering. Like I can't picture it in my brain, but something about creating such large scale impactful projects like roads and bridges and like dams and all these things was super, super interesting to me. And that's what made me choose civil initially. And I've just fallen in love with it more and more as I take more classes. 
And I've definitely stayed because of the community in this, not only in this department, but the College of Engineering as a whole. It's very collaborative. You always walk into a space and you feel like you can ask questions. You don't feel like you're competing with your peers to get the best grade on the test. It's more of a, hey, like, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me out? And then they say, like, oh, absolutely. Let's sit down and work through it. And Kayla and Teresa have both done those things for me during my time at CSU. And I hope that I can say the same, that I've done that for them. So it's very awesome. And like you get really close to everybody in your classes. Everybody's super friendly. And it really creates this warm and welcoming environment. Yeah, so I guess just echoing, I mean, what Sammy said, uh, I chose civil engineering because I thought I originally, well, originally I thought I wanted to do like architecture. I thought that was really cool. And I thought structures was the way to go for me. Um, and so I ended up in civil engineering because I knew I really liked math and science and um, physics. And so I decided to go that route. And then as I've gotten into my classes, I've decided that I actually don't like structures and they're not for me, but I found that water and other aspects of civil engineering are really interesting. Um, so I feel very fortunate that like, I've liked all of my classes and I found something that I didn't even know. I, I think going in, I didn't even know really was a part of civil engineering, but um, I've been able to discover that through my classes. And um, yeah, definitely echoing what Sammy says, I mean, super collaborative and helpful environment. I think the students at CSU and in the college and in our department are just really genuine, nice people and everyone is motivated by each other. And so we're all, you know, we work together and um, it definitely doesn't feel competitive, which I really like, because I, I think that's a way better environment for me to learn. Um, and then I also think the professors and faculty are really great in civil and environmental, everyone is, you know, they're all doing really cool research and are willing to talk to students about what they're doing and um, how you might be able to fit into that or what your career path might look like. And so I've had some really great interactions with faculty that have kept me um, really engaged in the curriculum. Yeah, kind of similar to what both Kayla and Sammy have mentioned. Um, coming out of high school, I did want, I knew I wanted to do engineering and it really was a process of elimination for me. So I was like, I can't do mechanical. That's definitely not my, my um, passion. And it came down to, I thought environmental sounded the most interesting for me. In high school, I didn't get to take a lot of chemistry and biology classes, but the ones I did, I definitely was the most excited about. Um, and that being paired with like how much I enjoyed my math classes, I thought it was a great fit. Um, I, th I feel really fortunate to say that I have enjoyed environmental engineering and that I never switched courses. Um, I really found what I like here. And like Kayla was saying, a huge part of my career path at CSU has been the support from faculty. Um, there are so many great professors that are really there to enhance your learning and make sure that you do understand the concepts. Um, engineering definitely is a challenging like road to take, but there have been more times than not where I've gone to professors asking for specific help on something really small and I've gotten that attention and I've gotten that um, help that I really needed to get to where I am today. Um, within environmental, you do get to take a lot more chemistry and biology and things like air quality engineering classes, which I've really enjoyed. I like being able to mix that science side with the engineering side. Um, I think it is also challenging to be in a biology class and a chemistry class outside of the civil and environmental engineering department, but I really think that's a cool balance. You get to see a lot of what CSU has to offer um, as a whole. Thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess again, I'll just sort of open it up if anyone has specific questions. Um, yeah, and if not, it might be nice to hear a little bit about the hands-on experience that students are able to participate in really from the beginning of their degree here at CSU. And so it might be nice to hear from faculty members some of those hands-on opportunities, whether that's research or working on projects in the labs or even senior design, which it might be nice to hear about senior design from some of our students as well. Uh, 
I guess that's my cue, huh? <laughs> um, so, you know, I was talking about 102 and 103. Those are the freshman intro classes. Um, and that, that gets you going here. Um, it, it, you won't take a lot of engineering courses your first year. Um, it'll be math, science, some other core curriculum classes. And so we want you to get grounded in engineering. We want you to know some professors, feel comfortable with the department such that you can reach out um, to some of the other resources like the student ambassadors, which um, I know the students really appreciate. If nothing else, <clears throat> it gives you people to talk to that have been through what you're going through also as a freshman. Um, you work your way through your sophomore and junior year and start taking more engineering courses. Um, particularly by the time you're a junior, you're taking mostly engineering courses, likely. And then um, the, one of the key courses throughout the curriculum is senior design. And that's a, a year-long course, pretty much the way it sounds. Um, a lot of engineering is design. That's, that's really what the, one of the big differences between engineering and science majors is you, you're, you get a lot more training in design principles, understanding what design means. And um, it sort of caps with that course. You, um, it's a year long course, you work with a group, you work in a team, you uh, tackle a project, a problem, you um, define what you're gonna do, the second semester you go off and do it. Often you're working with um, entities uh, outside of the university. Uh, maybe, um, you know, the um, Colorado Tran Department of Transportation, maybe, um, uh, environmental engineering firm that has sponsored a project. And so you get a lot of uh, experience working in a, in a somewhat real world environment. And the reason it's the senior design is because it's building on all the courses you've taken throughout those four years. You know, the, the structures, the geotech, the um, <clears throat> water engineering courses, the intro, a lot of the environmental engineering courses. And um, I think that that's often a highlight for students um, through their four years. But I will echo that um, we, we do support students. We try to support students. We have a lot of mechanisms for doing that, both throughout CSU, within the college, and really within the department um, at a lot of different levels. Um, because our success is also the, our success comes from your success or student success. At a lot of, in a lot of different ways. Thank you. Um, so there are some questions in the chat. Um, how much CAD work is used in civil engineering? So, so I can answer that. Um, you know, CAD is one of those tools that we want you to become familiar with. It's not, we're not expecting you to become an expert. You certainly wouldn't be coding CAD, you know, software. But um, as I think I said earlier, a lot of engineering is now about software tools and, and it leverages us. It allows us to do our job more effectively, better, quicker. And, and CAD is one of those things. So particularly in the freshman year, you do get exposure to it and maybe throughout um, the rest of your time here. But it's just one of many types of software tools you'll be exposed to. Yeah, and I'd like to follow up on that. Um... Uh, when you're doing your senior design, a lot of the senior design groups use CAD for the design. So that would be your senior year. And we have just hired a new faculty member to teach our um, our 305 class, which is an elective, um, which is dealing with CAD. So that's one of the really popular courses that we have. And you learn uh, software such as Civ3, Civil 3D, Civ 3D, and Rivet. Uh, and that's, like I said, a really extremely popular course. And so uh, as Ken says, you'll get exposed to it in your freshman year, and then as you go through the curriculum, particularly in the last two years, you'll probably be using it more and more. Thank you. And I see that um, Dr. Siller just joined us. Um, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? And Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> I sound best that way. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Tom Stiller. I am one of the faculty members who uh, helps teach the first year students as they come into the department. And I'm partly late because students depend on me and I was talking with them after class a little bit. So happy to join you. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, there's another question and is it easy to switch from one engineering major to another? 
Um, and I will answer that. I will say that it is fairly easy to switch um, engineering disciplines within the College of Engineering. Um, it's better to do that earlier on um, because while a lot of the foundation classes are similar, um, you know, once you even, even the Civ 102, 103 um, are quite a bit different than what you would take in electrical or mechanical as the introduction classes. So it's, um, it is encouraged to try and choose your discipline as early as possible, but um, I just had a mech student change in his junior year. <laughs> so, I mean, he's having to kind of start over a little bit, but um, it, is, it is possible to change, to change within the college. Um, the next question here in the chat is, how big is class size in the environmental engineering department compared to other departments? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll let Ken take that. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so your, your time here, you're going to see lots of different types of classes and, and some of the service classes, by that I mean maybe big math or math, physics, et cetera, those, those are going to be fairly large. Um, by the time you get to taking environmental engineering courses, they're, they're generally smaller. So that means less than 30, sometimes less than 20. Um, and um, that's that's the, and they're taught by engineering professors, as I think Chuck was alluding to. Um, so I, I think by the time you're taking content specific classes to, or environmental engineering content specific classes, they're in the twenty to thirty range. Um, Shannon, can I pop in a comment with one of the previous questions? Oh yes, please. Um, back to the question of how easy it is to switch between engineering majors. If you're really not sure what engineering major you want to do, but you're thinking engineering in general is something that interests you, an option that we have is to come in as engineering open option. Jackie just threw some info in the chat about that. But that's basically saying like you're undeclared within the College of Engineering rather than undeclared within the entire university. So you have, you're already into the College of Engineering. You don't have to apply second semester to get in later. And that first semester, you'll take a grand challenges and engineering course where you spend a couple of weeks learning about all the different disciplines. And that will hopefully allow you to make a more educated decision into which engineering discipline you want to declare second semester. Sammy, thank you so much for um, <laughs> explaining that better than I did. I really appreciate it. Yeah, the engineering 101 class that you would take as an open option, um, I know is a is a great discovery class to try and sort of hone in on what you're truly interested in. So um, thank you so much for, for mentioning that, Jackie and Sammy. <laughs> um, oh, we have a question from Grant that says, when would you build a concrete canoe? I think I that is um, I through, it. yeah, okay, Teresa, you go ahead, you take that. Okay, so um, concrete canoe is actually, it's a competition. So. Um, there's an organization called the American Society of Civil Engineers, and every year they do a collegiate concrete canoe competition where they set out a bunch of design standards and then teams compete from all over the country and build a concrete canoe. And then they have to, obviously the canoe needs to float, and then they'll race the canoe at the end of the year in a big competition. And so typically, um, though, like, people who are involved in ASCE, American Society of Civil Engineers, are usually the ones involved with the concrete canoe process. Um, and as a senior design project, um, a group of students typically in their senior years will lead that design process, but they look for, um, they look for first, second, third year help throughout the year. So especially on casting day, where they actually like, you know, mix all of the concrete, place it all, cast the canoe. That's a huge day where they need tons of support. And so you can get involved in um, competitions like that and that activity as a first year, if that's something that's interesting to you. Does that answer the question? So I just add, add a little bit there. The, the concrete canoe is actually a senior design project. So the people, the students that are getting involved in that, um, you know, you, we can have some undergraduates assist in that process. I mean, lower division undergraduates, but uh, typically it's a senior design project. Uh, and the competition part, if you're familiar with the uh, collegiate basketball tournament, right? There's regionals um, and then, you know, they, as you go up through it, and then it goes to a national competition. So 
uh, and then uh, different universities in the region uh, serve as the host university. So we served as the host for the uh, mountain region, I think about four or five years ago. And we had uh, competition teams come here and for example, race in our horse tooth reservoir, which is just west of town. Uh, and teams from uh, CU Boulder, Colorado School of Mines, New Mexico, uh, Wyoming, Utah, and so forth. So it's, uh, it's actually a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks, Kayla. Thanks, Dr. Shackelford. Um, so there's another question too. Math is not my strong suit. Would you recommend I go into more scientific fields or engineering fields? How much math is really <laughs> involved? I guess I'll ask Dr. Carlson, student ambassadors. Um, I, or Dr. Siller, sorry. <laughs> well, I'll just throw in my two cents. Um, I think yeah, all engineering students take four semesters of math, um, three semesters of calculus and differential equations. Um, and, and then it's used after that, but there are many classes. Um, it's not like um, every class is reliant on those four semesters, um, but that is sort of the fundamental basis of engineering is the four semesters of math. Um, maybe I'll let Tom answer too. Well, yeah, it, it definitely is an important topic but you do not have to be a mathematical wizard to be a good engineer. And so you, you do have to be competent. And so you have to make an effort to do well, but we are not mathematicians per se, and we are not applied mathematicians unless you're in research. So you can be a very good engineer without being great in math, but you can't be an engineer unless you can at least pass the courses appropriately. So don't feel you gotta be great at it, but you cannot be really bad at it either, to be honest. And there's lots of support on campus for math. So the reality is, if you come here, we're going to try to help you do well enough in math to be a good engineer. That's our goal. Yeah, I would also like to quickly mention that if you are struggling with certain math topics, once you get to engineering classes that apply the top, those topics, professors will generally do a quick like reintroduction of those specific concepts you'll be using within those classes. So I found that that has really helped me out. Um, also regarding some physics concepts where when taking physics one, I didn't feel super great about that. But then once I got into my statics and dynamics classes, I felt like that was re taught to me in a way that I understood a lot better. So um, you'll have support for your engineering professors as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like re, um, you're looking at the same like concepts, the math concepts, the physics concepts, but in a very like physical way, like in the context of civil engineering or environmental engineering. And I think that has helped me tons, you know, so. Thank you guys. So the next question is, uh, what kind of projects do environmental engineering students do? Um, <clears throat> so there's not all classes have projects. Many of them do. <clears throat> we have several lab classes. Um, in, at the freshman level, the, the project you would do would be civil and environmental engineering type projects. So last year, we focused on the Midwest floods. Um, the year before, we did a joint project with civil the civil section on the, um, the hurricane that uh, impacted the East Coast. Um, those both have civil and environmental aspects to them. Um, so in other classes, it really depends on the class. You know, uh, there, are, um, there are some water classes where you might be looking at um, um, the ecology of a river. Um, in our, we have a water quality lab class where you go in the lab and you're learning techniques to determine the water quality, maybe of a river. And then in senior design, like we sort of talked about, this would be multidisciplinary within civil and environmental engineering. It wouldn't be all environmental engineers. You might be um, looking at flooding. You might be um, designing a wastewater plant. You might be um, understanding um, air emissions related to the oil and gas industry and, and um, proposing how to clean that up. So it, it, it can be wide ranging and, it, and like I said, it really depends on the class. Thank you. Um, how much ecology is involved with environmental engineering? 
Um, really, almost as much as you want. Um, you know, there's there there you could minor in that. You definitely take two classes that have that are focused on ecology. One is a biology class. One is an actual ecology class. But then there's um, and those are more science oriented. But we have a few uh, courses within the civil and environmental engineering department that have ecological aspects to them. And one of them is required. And and you could take the other one, they're, they're not specifically environmental engineering courses. They are civil and environmental engineering courses taught throughout the department. Thank and you. I, I say one more thing about that is, is there is an ability to focus any degree you get on some, you will have some electives, um, not, not a whole lot, but you do have a, a number of electives so that if that's your interest or if your interest is air quality, you know, you could take more of that. Um, if your interest is energy, you could take more of that. There is that ability to, um, to provide a focus. And then, and then there are students that do minors, and that might actually take another semester um, because it's going to require a few more credits than um, is required just for the degree. And so then you could add a lot more focus to a particular area. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had a question actually in the session earlier this morning about um, sustainability and how much um, both majors uh, kind of focus on sustainability. So um, both Dr. Carlson, and I know Dr. Siller has a new class on sustainability. So I don't know if you want to mention that and kind of talk about that. Sure. Um, so we are, we're starting to see sustainability come into many of our courses. Uh, it's coming into the materials course that Dr. Adadero teaches. And at the first year, we introduced the concept of sustainability very early on because it's pertinent to all engineering, quite honestly, not just civil and environmental. It really is relevant to all of us. And now to sort of uh, reinforce it as you get closer to working, I'm developing a new senior, uh, senior course called Sustainable Civil and Environmental Engineering that'll be offered in the spring for the first time. So I think you'll find that during your four years, at CSU in our programs, there will be more sustainability coming into the program as we go. Sometimes explicitly in a course like mine, other times it'll be because Ken and I are introducing it the first year and in the junior year under materials and stuff. So it's becoming very, very relevant to us. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, we have another question about jobs. What jobs do environmental engineering students at CSU go on to have? Um, I, I try to tell um, students, overall engineering students, that you know, there, are, there are certainly jobs we can point to that a lot of them start with, but most of us actually evolve over the years and end up maybe not strictly doing engineering for our entire career. It could be management. Um, it could be in another field. Um, but often, often students end up in some sort of business role or management role. But in terms of like um, after graduating, uh, often they're, they're working for environmental engineering consulting firms that are, whose clients are the polluting industries um, uh, that, that don't, sometimes, I, I was talking with our class this morning about the oil and gas industry and how they engage with environmental engineering. So that's an example. They will hire environmental engineers and put them on staff, but, but also they, they use a lot of these environmental engineering consulting firms that um, then do projects for them, maybe remediation or cleanup, maybe compliance to regulations, maybe um, making their operations more efficient and less polluting. And then um, another big uh, area for employment is government. Um, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment has hired many of our students. That's our regulatory agency in Colorado, but they do a lot more than that. Um, they, they, um, they, they are in charge of making sure our waterways and drinking water and air is clean, et cetera. So those are, those are three big areas. But again, um, students often find their way into different types of fields. Um, you know, some, a lot of our students come into environmental engineering because they like the idea of, of, of interacting with the environment and being outside or, or not being stuck behind a computer all day. And so that could mean going to work for the Forest Service or um, other entities like that. 
that, um, that are focused on the environment. Thank you. I think we'll ask that question too about civil, um, what, what the students tend to go on to do in civil. Dr. Siller, Dr. Shackelford. Okay. Chuck, you wanna go first? All right, I'll jump in. Um, so <coughs> civil engineering is a pretty broad field. And as Ken said, we share a lot with environmental engineers in that a lot of civil engineers go to consulting engineering firms. Uh, that's where I spent three years of my career was in a consulting engineering firm. And like Ken mentioned, I got to spend a lot of time in the field. And so I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. But we also work for the government. I have students of mine who are working for structural engineering firms. I have students of mine who graduated who work in sort of design construct firms. So they, a lot of them are, in fact, I just had construction management talk to my class where they're involved with the construction aspect too. Some of my students are working for uh, Colorado Department of Transportation. If you were in Colorado, depending where you are, and you've been on I-25 in the north, one of my students is one of the lead engineers on that right now. So we tend to have a broad sweep of what we might do. It includes water projects, environmental projects. Dr. Shackelford can talk about his aspects because he, he does a lot of environmental related work. And so there's structures firms. We really do cover a lot of different things and it goes from consulting to government to some industry. Yeah, and I would say the, um, and, and it ranges. I mean, you can you can go work for a small company or a, or a small city, for example, um, or you can work for a very large company, you know, an energy company, a utility. Uh, and as uh, Tom said, you know, state, uh, local, state, and federal agencies. The Environmental Protection Agency, for example, hires hires both civil and environmental engineers. And uh, so I think one of the strengths of our two disciplines are is that um, there's an there's a, a extremely wide variety of potential job opportunities uh, for our graduates. And not only that, another aspect to it is, is with the growth here in Colorado, if you're interested in staying in Colorado, uh, there's all kinds of opportunities along the front range here uh, to stay in Colorado and work in Colorado, um, as well as go outside if you're, if you're interested in doing that. So um, yeah, I think there's a lot of flexibility in what you can, what you can do. And so kind of playing off of that, I guess, maybe taking a step backwards and not necessarily what you do after, but um, what's the um, internship opportunities for both civil and environmental engineering students in the area? So I'll just uh, comment on that. If you go to our webpage, we have uh, uh, examples of students. Students have posted examples, a picture of themselves and a short two or three paragraph of their internships. There's probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 up there. It gives you an idea of the types of internships our, our students get. So we actually don't um, have a formal internship program in the department, but our students uh, do get internships. Uh, and there's a lot of interest in our students for internships. Uh, one of the aspects of our department that's known nationally and internationally is our water projects. You know, we have a long history of expertise in water and we are known throughout the world for our water programs here in, in, in our department here at CSU uh, and so we have and, and then of course water is a vital resource here in the in the, in the western uh, U.S. and in, particularly in Colorado and so we have a lot of water related um, co companies along the front range that uh, have to deal with the water issues and of course as the state's population grows um, you know, we're going to need more and more engineers that are trained to deal with the water issues that are going to, you know, come along with that growth. Um, I can also speak to that. I have had an internship in Fort Collins um, with an engineering consulting firm, and I got that opportunity by going to the CSU Engineering Career Fairs, um, as well as participating in some other events that the college holds before the career fairs, such as um, Evening with Industry, which where you, you get to talk with recruiters before the giant career fair, Resume Rush, where you get to get that reviewed by peers and professionals, and things like that, um, but that got a little off off tangent, but there are a lot of opportunities in Fort Collins and near Fort Collins for engineering internships, specifically civil and environmental. Um, 
And I think that Kayla and Sammy can speak to internships as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. I also have had an internship down in the Denver area, but I got that through the CSU career fair as well. A lot of companies, um, like the company that I worked for specifically, they love CSU students um, and they specifically recruit from CSU because they really, they think that our program does a really good job of producing really good engineers. And so um, I was able to do that internship. I know Sammy's had internships as well. Yeah, I'll talk about my experience a little bit. I like the career fair at CSU is so fun because you walk in and you don't have to be fishing for like, oh, where are the civil companies? They're everywhere. There are so many civil companies. I think it's probably like the best represented major at the career fair, which is really great for us. And I've had two internships, both of which came out of the engineering career fair. And if you want to stay in Colorado, that is great. There's lots of opportunities in Fort Collins. Uh, last summer, I had an internship in Denver because that's where I'm from. Um, but you can also branch out a little bit. A couple summers ago, I actually got to intern in Seattle with a big company and they paid for my relocation and like gave me corporate housing for the summer, which was super clutch. So you can definitely look for those opportunities as well. And it's really fun to explore not only different disciplines within civil, civil engineering, but exploring locations where you might want to work in the future. Because when you graduate, the doors are all open and you kind of get to decide like, oh, where do I want to work? What company do I want to work for? What discipline do I want to work for? And that's sort of the beauty of internships. And it's been mentioned a couple of times, but civil is a very, very broad field. And like Kayla said, kind of her testimony was, I thought I wanted to do this. But then within that same field, I found I wanted to do something totally different. And internships are a great opportunity to explore different disciplines and see what you like or maybe what you hate, what you don't want to do or what you want to explore a little bit more. So I definitely encourage checking out the career fair. You can even go as a first year student and they might be interested in talking to you and hiring you on for an internship. So I just want to break in here. I'm looking at our webpage with all of our student internships and none of you guys are up there. You need to get a hold of Linda and get your stories up there to add, <laughs> add to the list. <laughs> okay, we'll be sure and do that. Um, the other question that, thank you guys so much for all of that information, that's wonderful. There was another question about, um, would you be able to go right into the workforce after college or would you gain some experience through internships first? So I will say that internships are not required in our curriculum. Um, they're not required for graduation. Um, However, many students end up doing them over summers. So not necessarily right after you graduate would you go into an internship, but you would take those summers to try and experience the internships um, so that you can be uh, more marketable once you do graduate. So um, hopefully that answers that question. I'll add something to that, uh, Shannon. Okay. We also, uh, are some of our faculty hire students, undergraduate students during the summers to work uh, on their research projects. Yeah. And so, for example, we have a large hydraulics lab about six miles west of campus uh, called the Engineering Research Center. And I know two of our faculty who routinely hire undergraduates to work in the summer uh, on their projects out there, uh, dealing with dams, uh, spillways, and those types of things. Another faculty member uh, uh, does water resources uh, modeling studies, and he, he teaches our 203 class, uh, which is a second uh, semester sophomore class. And he often hires students out of that class to work, uh, you know, after their sophomore year, after their junior year. And so he recruits some of them for the, to stay on for a master's degree. So there are, and other than internships, there are opportunities here, on, here in the department to work uh, on applied research projects in the summer. Well, and not just the summer, actually, um, a lot of us hire undergraduates throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, we'll have graduate students, of course, and the undergraduates are working with the graduate students. But it's, it's, a, it's a great situation for us. It brings in students at an earlier age. And then, you know, you work your way up to more complex tasks and maybe end up going to graduate school because of that. And thank you so much for mentioning that because um, the next question is how many students stay on to get a master's degree? And is that a one or two year commitment at CSU? Um, I primarily work with undergraduate students, but I think Dr. Shackelford can probably answer that. Yeah, that, yeah, so we do have students. In fact, we're trying to recruit more of our students to stay for a master's degree. Um, it's becoming more and more prevalent um, for, for the disciplines to desire a master's degree. Doesn't mean you have to get one. Um, and normally it's a, it's a two-year commitment. 
um, you know, can be as short as one and a half years. And we have different master's degree programs. You know, we have a research thesis, thesis oriented, which is normally a two years, uh, requires you get involved in a research project. You have a faculty advisor. And then we have what's called a master of engineering uh, degree, which is pure courses. You take 30 extra credit hours of courses, uh, mostly graduate level courses. Um, and that only, that only spreads out more than one year because you know, you're kind of limited in how many courses you can take based on your capability uh, per semester. And some of the courses, you know, some of our courses are not offered every semester. So uh, it gets spread out a little bit. So I would say probably in the master of engineering, you're probably talking the fastest would be maybe a year and a half. I mean, some people could do it maybe in a year, but it's typically probably a year and a half at the fastest. And for a master of science, with a thesis research option, it's probably, at least all my MS students have always been two years. Thank you. Yeah, can I add to that a little bit? Yes, please. You know, one of the things you have to think about is why do you do a master's? And as we've portrayed, civil and environmental engineering are pretty broad. And what a master's allows a student to do is specialize. A lot of our students at the end of their bachelor's degree don't know they want to specialize yet and that's why they go off and work but for so for people like myself and Chuck also we were in a field that's related to working with soils that you really couldn't work very much without doing a master's because it required a specialization but so many jobs don't require that so you don't have to do it but if you really have a specialization you want to do that comes to your mind during your curriculum, then it makes a lot of sense to stay on. And as Chuck said, we'd love to keep our good students. Thank you. So we're getting close to the end of our time. Um, and as Sammy just mentioned in the chat, any other burning questions anyone wants to ask? Um, I hope that we were able to answer uh, sufficiently most of your questions. Uh, we appreciate you spending your time with us and letting us kind of sell you on our department and our degrees because we think they're fabulous. So <laughs> um, I guess if we don't have any more questions, I just want to thank um, Dr. Carlson, Dr. Siller, Dr. Shackelford for being here and all the student ambassadors and of course Jackie. Um, I appreciate you all taking the time to do this and I guess if we don't have anything else, we can go ahead and end the session. Well, I just, um, yeah, there's a question that popped up, oh. but I was going to talk about education abroad really quickly. I know Grace okay. asked about a foreign language minor, definitely manageable. On Saturday, we have a session at 10 a.m. all about education abroad, and that's a great time to knock out some of your language requirements for your minor. So be sure to tune in 10 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I got to jump in at that one because um, I have run education abroad programs in the summer for engineering students. I've gone to China three times. Right now, we're not going to China, as you could imagine, and we're not traveling internationally, but I'm working on a potential one in Peru and maybe go back to China. So as a department, we're trying to also support that. Great, thank you. There is another question in here that says for students, um, what other schools were on your list and why did you choose CSU over others? Does any, anybody want to answer that? I can answer. Oh, Sammy, do you want to go? No, you, you got it first. <laughs> okay. So I was really, I, I don't know. I picked schools kind of at random. I'm from Colorado and I was pretty convinced that I didn't want to stay in state. I wanted to go out of state either to California or to Vermont. I was all over the place in where I wanted to go. I just knew I wanted to go out. And my parents made me tour um, the schools in Colorado just as like a base of what that would look like. And I toured CSU. It wasn't even on my radar. And I loved the culture at CSU. I felt immediately welcomed. Um, I thought everyone on campus was super friendly and willing to talk to me. And honestly, that's why I ended up coming here was because I you know, at the end of the day, an undergraduate degree is an undergraduate degree. And so I went where I felt like I fit in best and I felt like I fit in here at CSU. That was really fast, but that's my two cents. I totally agree. Very similar experience. Kayla and I went to the same high school. So we kind of went through like 
the same process together like oh where are you applying like what are you thinking and then the reason i chose csu was because i came to engineering exploration day back when it was just a one day weekend event instead of a week-long virtual event and i met up with kayla and she talked up the program and i thought wow she's a current student she thinks it's cool it sounds great i want to have a similar experience so that one-on-one -on -one connection really sold it for me um i can share my story really quickly um i knew i had to stay in state uh, when choosing schools and one of the ones on my top list was School of Mines and when I toured Mines and toured CSU the biggest difference was the attitude the students and the faculty had. Mines um, felt really competitive and everyone was kind of like our culture is being stressed out all the time and coming to CSU it felt like a lot more supportive and everyone was like get involved in a club like go up to horse tooth learn what Fort Collins is about and so I definitely think I came here for um, the culture and the supportive behavior of engineering at CSU. Yeah I'll say as department head I routinely hear students our students talk about sort of the family atmosphere that we have here at CSU relative to our competitors to the south so uh, I think a lot of our students enjoy the sort of the family atmosphere um, associated with not only our department, but the college and the entire university. I agree. I agree. I am a graduate of CSU as well. <laughs> not engineering, but uh, a graduate nonetheless. Um, so, okay, well, it is 11.50 again. Thank you everybody so much for being here and participating. I really appreciate it. We do, our next session is at 1230 and we will have mock lectures from um, Dr. Baker, Dr. Omar, Omar Osbeck, and Dr. Ellison. So um, hope you guys can join then as well and look forward to seeing you all there. Yeah, thanks for attending and hope to see everybody here in the, in the fall or. Yes. Or whenever, whenever you <laughs> I second <laughs> Thank that. Thank you all so much. And go Rams. <laughs> there you go.